Okay, let's say we wanted to make a map of this piece of land. Um, and we want to we want to map two things. We want to map um, this river right here and the tributary that comes in. And let's say that there's another variable. We we just had a measurement of a um, we saw on the weather radar a uh, thunderstorm came over and the thunderstorm is gone, but we we have some information on how much rain fell in this area. So we want to map those two things and. They're, they're two very different types of phenomena. One is called an, is, is an object, it's, it's discrete data. The river, where the river is, or, and where it's not, meaning the forest or any other place, um, kind of defines it as an object. We can say, yep, the river's right here, and nope, the river's not there. The other type, the rainfall, is, is called field um, information. It's continuous data, and the idea is that any single spot on this landscape, we could take a measurement for rainfall, and uh, and we did. So, so how do we translate that into uh, into vector and raster data? Let's go take a look. For the river, the object, um, also known as discrete data, we want to know uh, where the river is and where it's not. So, in the raster data model, we would represent that in an array of cells. It's kind of a giant grid, and in that grid, we would have to put a value in each sing, you know, in every single cell, in every pixel. And unlike a a photo, you know, a photographer's image, which cells represent color, our our cells don't represent color; they represent things on the ground. And in this case, we would use one maybe to describe where that river was, two to describe where that tributary was. And zero, in this case, describes where the rivers are not. There's no river at every single one of the zero locations. But the vector data model also can represent objects, and it does it a little better. Instead of saying, okay, well, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 and so on, it says, why do we waste all of this information on where the object is not? It's kind of, it's a waste of space. So instead, the vector data model just plants these vertexes or the vertices every single place there's a, a useful um, piece of information so it would say yep river one starts here goes there goes there goes there and it draws a line and then the same thing with the tributary it says okay well if i have a data point here and a data point there and it draws a line between them you can also have point data with vector or polygon data but in this case we're just looking at a line file because it's a river so if vector does such a great job, why do we even use raster? Well, raster is really good at the other type of phenomenon, which is uh, field kind of representations and continuous data. So for instance, that example of wanting to know how much rainfall fell in that area, well, the raster does a pretty good job at that because it says, oh, you need a spot where you can take a measurement in every single location. Well, that's very convenient because I have many cells. Let's populate them. And, <laughs> and so it says um, in every single spot, it can record a value. And in this case, the numbers aren't representing names like they were over here. The numbers are actually representing quantities. And if this was an elevation raster, then the quantities would be height. Um, in this case, if it's rainfall, perhaps they represent inches of rain or something like that. Um, six inches of rain in one uh, thunderstorm would be pretty intense, but it's just an example, so don't get too bent out of shape about it. Um, so raster does a great job at this, whereas vector is okay. Um, you know, we might have to kind of create these these regions or these these contour lines to get at the same idea, um, but both data models can do object or field phenomena. Um, but the vector is kind of better at this object representation and the raster is kind of better at this field representation. Um, but you should be conscious of, of uh, both the data model type and the type of phenomenon you're trying to map.